فاشرف بي لاشتغال بالعلم ولا تبغي به ما عشت يا ذا بدلا ويا له من شرف عظيم الحمد لله رب العالمين له الحمد الحسن والثناء الجميل وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له يقول الحق وهو يهدي السبيل وأشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه والتابعين لهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد We are in the explanation of وصية الإمام عبد الرحمن ابن يحيى المعلم لتلميذه الشيخ Muhammad ibn Ahmad al-Mu'allimi, the bequest of the noble Imam, the illustrious scholar, Abdurrahman ibn Yahya al-Mu'allimi to his noble student, Muhammad ibn Ahmad al-Mu'allimi. We stopped at the statement of the Shaykh when he said, فَمَنْ دَعَى اللَّهَ عَزَّ وَجَلَّ Anyone who supplicates to Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala, أَيْ سَأَلَ مِنْهُ أَنْ يَرْحَمَهُ And he asks, for Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala to have mercy on him. O Yashfiyahu, or that Allah cures him. O Yughniyahu, or Allah suffices him. O Ghayra Dhalika, or other than that. Faqad Abadahu, he has worshipped Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala. Wa man da'a Ghayra Allahi, anyone who supplicates other than, who supplicates to other than Allah. Azza wa Jalla. Ay sa'ala minhu naf'an ghaybiyan. I.e. by asking an unseen benefit. فَقَدْ عَبَدَ غَيْرَ اللَّهِ That person has worshipped other than Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala. فَأَمَّا الْخُدُوعُ وَالتَّذَلُّلُ As for humbling yourself and belittling yourself. طَلَبًا لِنَفْعِ الْغَيْبِ Asking a benefit that's unseen. Then the shaykh goes on to say, فَإِنَّ اللَّهِ تَعَالَى For verily if Allah تَعَالَى إِذَا أَمَرَ بِالتَّذَلُّلِ If Allah commands us to humble ourselves, to humble ourselves, لغيره to other than himself. If Allah says to us, go humble yourself to so and so. فَمْتَثَلْنَا ذَلِكَ And then we follow Allah's command. كُنَّا عَابِدِينَ لِلَّهِ We are worshippers of Allah, not the worshippers of those who we commanded to humble ourselves for. لا لمن وقع الخضوع في صورة له And it is not a worshipping for the person you are commanded to humble yourself for. فَمَنْ تَذَلَّلَ For example, if a person humbles himself لوالديه towards his parents إلى حد الذي أذين الله به and he does it in the way Allah تبارك وتعالى commanded him وقصد بذلك أن that person whilst humbling himself to his parent his intention in his heart is following the command of Allah فهو عابد لله لا للوالدين he is a worshipper of Allah not a worshipper of his of his parents فوصية لمحمد my bequest to Muhammad. Who is he talking to? Muhammad ibn Ahmad al-Mu'allim rahimahullah. He's talking to his student. He says to you him, My bequest to you is, وَلِكُلِّ مُسْلِمٍ And every Muslim, أَن لَا يَدْعُوَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ That you do not call on to anyone other than Allah. Allahu Akbar. He's telling his student the, the importance of having you, uh, the connection with Allah purely subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because why? لأنه الإله الحق Allah is the true Ilah الذي لا إله إلا هو that there is none worthy of worship except him. That's the reason why he's saying this to him. And Allah says in the Quran in Surah Al-Ra'ad Ayah 14 له دعوة الحق والذين يدعون من دونه لا يستجيبون لهم بشيء the da'wah, the true calling is for Allah alone. And those who call on to other than Allah, whatever they are calling on to, they will not reply to them. And they will not give them that which they want from them whatsoever. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also says, وَلَا تَدْعُ مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ Do not call on to anyone besides Allah. مَا لَا يَنْفَعُكَ وَلَا يَضُرُّكَ that which will not benefit you nor harm you. فَإِنْ فَعَلْتَ If you do that, فَإِنَّكَ إِذَا مِنَ الظَّالِمِينَ Then you are verily from the transgressors, those who have exceeded their limits. So don't call on to anyone other than Allah. You're calling on to someone, مَا لَا يَنْفَعُكَ He can't benefit you. وَلَا يَضُرُّكَ And he can't harm you. Rather, 
he cannot even benefit himself, let alone anyone else. Surah to Yunus, Ayah 106. So he says to his student, فَوَصِيَّتِي لِمُحَمَّدٍ Oh my student Muhammad, وَلِكُلِّ مُسْلِمٍ and every Muslim, أَلَّا يَدْعُوَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ That they don't supplicate to no one other than Allah. وَلَا يَفْعَلَ فِعْلًا فِيهِ خُضُوعُ يَطْلُبُ بِهِ نَفْعَ الْغَيْبِ إِلَّا إِذَا عَلِمَ أَنَّ اللَّهَ تَبَارَكَ وَتَعَالَى أَمَارَ بِهِ And that a person does not do an action where he humiliates himself and he requests from any form of benefits, unseen benefit from anyone except if Allah commands you to do it. If Allah commands you to humiliate and humble yourself for somebody, then it becomes a command from Allah. And if Allah gives you permission to do so, then it becomes a permission from Allah. فَمَنْ تَحَقَّقَ هَذَا الْأَمْرَ وَالْتَزَمَهُ Anyone who holds on to this which I'm mentioning and has a correct understanding of it, فَلَمْ يَدْعُوا إِلَّا اللَّهِ And that he doesn't call on to anyone other than Allah. وَلَمْ يَفْعَلْ And he does not do. مَا فِيهِ خُضُوعٌ And he doesn't do anything which in it is humility and humbleness. Humility more like. يَطْلُبُ بِهِ النَّفْعِ الْغَيْبِ where he is asking for unseen benefit. Illa unless Ma Alima and Allah Ta'ala Amarabihi unless he recognizes and he realizes Allah has commanded him to do this. Oh Adina Fihi. Or Allah has given him permission to do this. Fakad bari amina shirki, then that person is far from shirk. A person he humbles and he belittles himself for somebody with the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah gives you permission to do so. Allah says you can do this, then you are permitted to do it. And you are allowed to do it. That specific situation, you have an evidence for it, you have a evidence to do it, then you are allowed to do it. And by doing that, you're not a person who has fallen into shirk. As for the person who has not really got that from Allah, I mean, Allah hasn't given him the red light, green lights, hasn't given him the permission. You see, he hasn't got that. وَشَكَّ And he's also doubtful whether he's allowed to humble, humiliate himself for this. فَعَلَيْهِ أَنْ يَحْتَاطَ Upon that person is to take the safer path. It is to be on the safe side. وَمَنِ اطَّلَ عَلَى هَذَا وَشَكَّ ثُمَّ لَمْ يَحْتَاطِدْ As for the one who is doubtful, he is not sure, is he allowed to humble and humiliate himself for this person and ask from this person? Or is he not? He's in doubt. He's not sure. And then he also does not take the safe path. فَحَاصِرُ ذَلِكَ The result of this would be for him. And now قَدْ أَقْدَمَ عَلَى مَا يُمْكِنُ عِنْدَهُ أَنْ يَكُونَ كُفْرًا وَشِرْكَ That he might fall into something that may, that may be shirk or kufr. If he's not sure if he's allowed to do this. And then he's not taking the safe path and he's not leaving it off. Then it could be that he puts himself in a predicament and a situation that this act which he is doing it is kufr and it is shirk. Wal muhimmu, what is important, the shirk says. An tal tazima sabil al najati, that you hold on to, that you stick to this path, which the victorious path, path the successful path. Wa tad'u ilayhi, and you call to that path. The shirk took this from the ayah. Qul hadihi sabili, ad'u ila Allahi ala basiratin, ana wa man ittaba'ani, wa subhanallahi, وَمَا أَنَا مِنَ الْمُشْرِكِينَ قُلْ هَذِهِ This is my path. أَدْعُوا إِلَى اللَّهِ I call Allah to this path. عَلَى بَصِيرَةٍ With insight. أَنَا I call to this path. وَمَنِ اتَّبَعَنِي And anyone who follows me calls to this path. وَسُبْحَانَ اللَّهِ Exalted is Allah. وَمَا أَنَا مِنَ الْمُشْرِكِينَ And I am not from the, the mushrikeen are those who associate partners with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the person who is upon destruction... <coughs> And loss is the person who لِمَنْ ضَلَّ وَانْحَرَفْ عَنْ هَذَا السَّبِيلِ The one who deviates from that path, the one who falls into that which is not the way of the Prophet ﷺ. So the Shaykh said, وَالْمُهِمُ What is important is أَنْ تَلْتَزِمَ سَبِيلَ النَّجَاتِ That you stick to the path of success. وَتَدْعُوا إِلَيْهِ And you call the people to this path of success. وَأَنْ تُحْسِنَ ظَنَّكَ بِالنَّاسِ And that you also correct and you perfect your thoughts about the people فَمَا دَامَ مُحْتَمِلًا عِنْدَكَ فِي شَخْصٍ as long as there is with you a doubt regarding a person أَنَّ لَهُ عُذْرًا that 
that he may have a reason in a matter, maqbulan, an acceptable reason, عند الله with Allah, فحمله على السلامة, carry him and perceive him upon safety. Whilst there is a, a excuse which is justifiable with him, then be on be of those who take him with safety. Don't give him uh, bad assumptions. وكل أمره وكل 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 أمره إلى الله and surrender his affairs to Allah. If you see a person and they're coming with something that there is a doubt for you in it. Regarding a person, somebody is very doubtful to you. And Nalahu Udra, but he has an excuse. Makbul and an acceptable excuse. And Allah with Allah. Fahmilhu ala salama. He keep him upon innocency. Don't judge him by saying he's guilty. Then al istashab originally is a salam, baraatu, baraatu dhimma. That his dhimma is free from all this. Wakilam wakil amrahu ilallah. And attribute his affairs to who? To Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because Allah tabarak wa ta'ala is the one who knows the people's situations. The people might have excuses times which you don't know. You don't know that. And you should have excuses and assumptions, assumptions of the people. لذلك Allah tabarak wa ta'ala, he says in the Quran, ربنا لا تؤاخذنا إن نسينا أو أخطأنا أو الله Don't hold us account to something if we forget it or if we do it out of mistake. Don't hold us account to it. And the Hadith Sahih Muslim, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has said, Allah said, I have done that for you. Meaning, I will not hold you account for something that you have done out of forgetfulness or you have done it from a shortcoming. It was a mistake. Allah won't hold us account for it. So this person might have done it out of mistake or he might have done it out of Forgetfulness. So this is an excuse, shar'i excuse for him. This is something you would find with Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah. Whereas you won't find this in Al Tawa'if wal Firaq wal Ahzab al Munharifa, the groups, the sects that are deviated from the straight path. Then the Shia goes on to Al Matlab al Rabi', the fourth chapter. Shahada to Anna Muhammad al Rasulullah. After he spoke about in the third chapter of what? Shahada to Allah ilaha illallah. Now he's speaking about the second testimony, which is Shahadatain. We have a Shadu Allah ilaha illallah, and we also have wa Shadu Anna Muhammad al Rasulullah. That Muhammad is the Messenger of Allah. Wa man lazim dhalika, wa man lazim, sorry, wa min lazim dhalika tasdiquhu fi kulli ma akbar bihi, al Rabbihi azza wa jalla. واستيقان أن ذلك حق محض لا ريب فيه ويتبع ذلك المحبة والطاعة للتباع. The Sheikh says, ومن لازم what necessitates from believing in the Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم ومن ذا ومن لازم ذلك شهادة أن لا إله إلا الله وشهد أن محمد رسول الله testifying to that Muhammad is the slave. And the Messenger of Allah, what comes? Once you say, وَأَشْهَدُ And I testify that Muhammad is the Messenger of Allah. From that statement of yours, what necessitates from it is, you believe every single thing that the Prophet tells you, عَلَيْهِ الصَّلَاةُ وَالسَّلَامِ From Allah, Tabarak wa Ta'ala. وَاسْتِقَانُ أَنَّ ذَلِكَ حَقٌ محب. And that you have unwavering conviction, no doubt in your heart, that whatever he says, it is the truth. It is the pure truth. La rayba fihi, there's no doubt in it. Wa yattabi'u dhalika al-mahabba. And then the love follows. Wa ta'atu and obedience. Al-ittiba' following him. The love you have and the obedience for him necessitates also following him alayhi salatu wa salam. Why? Li'annahu sadiqu al-masduq. He is truthful in everything he says and he is trusted by Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala. The Messenger alayhi salatu was salam. We also believe and we take from him every information of the unseen which he has told us alayhi salatu was salam. Whether it be the things that have already happened 
and also the things that are going to happen in which he has told us alayhi salatu wasalam. It even encompasses the things that he has told us that are going to take place on this earth and those things that are going to take high above. We also believe and take from him the things that he has told us that's going to take in this world and the things that are going to take in the hereafter. We also take from him the things that he has told us that will take place in the grave. Alayhi salatu wasalam. This is what it means to say shahadatu anna muhammadan rasulullah. Shaykhul Islam ibn Taymiyyat rahimahullah in his noble book, in his great noble book in which he refused Fakhruddin al-Razi in the concept of giving precedence to the intellect over the textual evidence. He called the book Dar Ta'arud al-Aqli wa naql on the second volume. Page 149, Ibn Taymiyyah says, وَمِنَ الْمَعْلُومِ What is known out of necessity is أَنَّ أَصْلَ الْإِيمَانِ The original essence of the Iman is تَصْدِيقُ الرَّسُولِ To believe in the Messenger. فِيمَا أَخْبَرَ In everything which he has told us. وَطَاعَةُ فِيمَا أَمَرَ And to obey him in everything which he has commanded us. عليه الصلاة والسلام So the person who trust the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He obeys him. And the one who obeys him, follows him alayhi salatu wasalam. So if you don't do that, then you have lost the original essence of your iman. You lose the aslul iman, the foundation of the iman. The evidences that show this are extensive in number. The evidences that show this are extensive in number. But let's just take some of this as an example. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He tells us in the Qur'an, in Surah Al-Fatih, Ayah 9, إِنَّا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ شَاهِدًا وَمُبَشِّرًا وَنَذِيرًا لِتُؤْمِنُوا بِاللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ وَتُعَزِّرُوهُ وَتُوَقِّرُوهُ وَتُسَبِّحُوهُ بُكْرَةً وَأَصِيلًا Allah says, إِنَّا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ We have sent down unto you, we, إِنَّا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ شَاهِدًا وَمُبَشِّرًا وَنَذِيرًا He is a shahid. Mubashiran, a glad tidings. Wa nadiran, a wuna. Litu'minu billahi, so you can believe in Allah. Wa rasulihi and his messenger. Wa tu'azziruhu, you can honor him. Wa tuwakiruhu, you can respect him. Wa tusabbihuhu bukratan wa asila. And you can exalt him subhanahu wa ta'ala. Bukratan wa asila in the morning and in the evening. So the asal is what? In this ayah, litu'minu billahi wa rasulihi, the messenger. From the haqq that the messenger has on us is tawqeer, we respect him. We honor him, alayhi salatu wasalam, even over our own selves and everything that we have. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said in the hadith sahih muslim, and this hadith is mutawatir, it has reached multitude narration. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, umirtu an uqatil an nas, I was commanded to fight with the people, hatta yashadu an la ilaha illallah, that until they testify that there is none worthy of worship. Also, وَيُؤْمِنُوا بِي And they believe in them. Believe in me. وَبِمَا جِئْتُ بِهِ And everything which I have come with. فَإِنْ فَعَلُوا ذَلِكَ If they do this. عَصَمُوا مِنِّي دِمَاءَهُمْ وَأَمْوَالَهُمْ عَصَمُوا مِنِّي دِمَاءَهُمْ وَأَمْوَالَهُمْ وَحِسَابُهُمْ عَلَى اللَّهِ تَعَالَى If they do this, they've sacred, they've protected from me their blood, their wealth. إِلَّا بِحَقِّهَا وَحِسَابُهُمْ عَلَى اللَّهِ تَعَالَى And their accounting is upon Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala. So this hadith teaches us that the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has to be believed in. There is no person who comes in this nation except for upon him is to believe in the Messenger Alayhi Salatu wa Salam. Also Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala He says, فَمَنْ أَظْلَمُ Who is more greater in transgression, transgression in other words, there is nobody. This is an, it's, it's in a form of a questioning, but it's actually a statement. Allah is saying, فَمَنْ أَظْلَمُ Who is more transgressive than the person مِمَّنْ كَذَبَ عَلَى اللَّهِ وَكَذَّبَ, وكذب بِالصِّدْقِ إِذْ جَاءَهِ أَلَيْسَ فِي جَهَنَّمَ مَثْوَلْ أَلَيْسَ, جا أليس, في أليس فِي جَهَنَّمَ مَثْوَلْ لِلْكَافِرِينَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, who is more transgressive, then the one who has lied upon Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala. وَكَذَّبَ بِالصِّدْقِ 
and he's also disbelieved in the truth that was sent to him. Id ja'ahu when it came to him. Alaysa is it not? Fi jahannama. Ama alaysa lil kafirina. Is it not for the disbelievers in Jahannama a boat? Is it not for them? Walladhi jaa'a bi sidqi wa saddaqa bi. The ones who came with the truth and they also believed in the truth. Ula'ika humul muttaqoon. Verily they are the pious ones. Surah Al-Zumar, Ayah 32 to Ayah 33. So, it is from the meanings of Shahada to Anna Muhammad Rasulullah that you come with Mahabba and Ta'a and Ittiba' and you do Tasdiq fi kulli ma akhbara bihi and you believe in everything which he has told you alayhi salatu was salam whether it be al akhbar al ghayb al madiyah wal mustaqbala the unseen that has taken place already or that which is to come in the future whether it be fi al awalim al ulwiyah aw al sufliyah whether it be the high universe or below whether it be fi dar al dunya in this world or whether it be in dar al barzakh or it be in the dar al akhira you are one who believes the Prophet in every single one of those places what he has told you regarding it. I will conclude there inshallah ta'ala for today's session with the wasiyatul imam Abdul Rahman ibn Yahya al-Mu'allimi to his student Muhammad ibn Ahmed al-Mu'allimi. Anything which I have said that was incorrect. فَإِنَّهُ مِنِّي وَمِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ وَاللَّهُ وَرَسُولُهُ بَرِئَانِ مِنْ سُبْحَانَكَ اللَّهُمَ بِحَمْدِكَ أَشْهَدُ أَلَّا إِلَهِ إِلَّا اللَّهِ أَسْتَغْفِرُكَ وَأَتُوبُ إِلَيْهِ